Hello, good evening, everyone. So today we are going to talk about the classification systems of the Vasak vaginal fistula. So broadly speaking, there are two important classification systems. And uh, we are going to talk about the evolution of the classification systems and what are the components of them, what is the current relevance of the classification systems in the VBF management. And uh, these are the years where the important evidences were published. With respect to the classification, we'll look at that subsequently. So let us start by looking at their classification systems. So broadly speaking, there are two classification systems. As I said, there one is the Waldeck classification given in 1995, other is the Go classification in 2004. Waldeck classification was a very simplified classification. So what did it mainly focus on? It mainly focused on the whether the closing mechanism was involved or not. Closing mechanism means the blood and eggs, the sphincter, the urethra, whether it was involved or not. So if the closing mechanism was not involved, it was the best thing and it was type 1 fistula. And if it was involved, it was type 2 fistula. Type 3 were separate exceptional cases. Type 2 fistula, if the closing mechanism was involved, it was further into type 2A and type 2B, depending on whether the urethra was involved and what length was involved. Okay. And again, it was not very specific about the length of involvement of the urethra as well. So broadly, it was emphasizing on the involvement of the sphincter or the continence of the patient. Now, there's another classification, A and B, which uh, included the circumferential defect. We'll talk about the circumferential defect in a while, whether it was present or not. Okay, so Waldick had uh, limitations because it did not include a lot of parameters which might predict the outcome of the surgery. So goals modified the classification and included three important components now. Okay. So goals classification, number one included the distance, the distance of the fistula from the meter. So this was the component which Waldick already had in terms of the closing mechanism. So it included that in a more descriptive way by including the exact distance, whether it was very close to the urethra, whether it was away from the urethra meters. So the more close it is from the meters, that means the continence is going to be less. So the outcomes is going to be more challenging. So that is one way of classifying. The other component in the ghost classification was the size of the fistula, which is very simple. And the third one is the spatial parameters, which was again divided into one, two, and three, depending on the amount of the fibrosis, okay, the luginal length, the bladder capacity, and any spatial circumstances, for example, a circumferential fistula, previous repair, radiation, so anything that could make it a complicated fistula will fall under spatial considerations, category three. So this is something, the broad components of the fistula. Why the GOES is superior or GOES has modified it? What are the modifications? The broadly, we got a more detailed classification of the closer system involvement. In the category three, we got the more detailed description of the parameters which might predict outcomes of the surgery. For example, the fibrosis, the vaginal length, the bladder capacity, and the previous risk factors, like for example, the radiations and the surgery. So these are all the advantages of a goals classification over a Waldeck. Okay. Now, just I want to clarify one thing. The Waldeck and goals, this classification system was mainly for an obstetric fistula. Because if you try to use this fistula, this for a post-hysterectomy VVF, then that Waldeck will always be type 1. Goals classification will always be type 1 or 2. So it will be usually will be type 1. So the detailed description of the closing system involvement comes when there is an obstetric fistula because these are usually trigonal fistulas or infratrigonal fistulas. So in these cases, we need a detailed description. But for a supratrigonal fistula or a post-surgical fistula, we don't require a detailed uh, Waldeck or a course classification. Okay. Now, we were frequently encountering the term circumferential defect. Now, we will quickly understand what it is. Basically, a circumferential fistula is when there is a circumferential defect and the bladder has been separated from the urethra entirely. So you can see the bladder has been separated from the urethra entirely. This could be a small gap, this could be a large gap, whatever be it. This is a complicated fistula and this involves a closing mechanism and the bones are exposed on the anteriorly. You can palpate the bones and... Uh, this comes under the GOES category 3, okay? So if you just take this, for example, and put a GOES classification for this, what will be? So the urethral length, the distance, the first one will be number one category will be the distance, okay? That will come under. So suppose the length is reduced and it comes under category 3 or category 4, whatever. Then the size of the fistula, for example, is 2, then it will come under type B. Okay, it will come under B. 
and the third one is the circumferential defect so it will come under category 3 okay so this will be the goes numbering or a classification of a circumferential fistula for so this is more practical because you get more idea about the details of the fistula now so having discussed the two classification system what did the study by Gapes in 2012 say so this uh, comparative study gave us an evidence that ghost classification is more superior, more effective in predicting the closure of the ostrative fistula than the valid classification. So this is very obvious. We know the reasons why and uh, we know uh, they are mainly for an ostrative fistula. So these are the two things you should be knowing very confidently that these classifications we are talking about are mainly for an ostrative fistula and ghost is superior to valdic. There are various parameters why ghost is superior to valdic okay so is it really not relevant in the developed world at all developed world means we are mainly talking about supratrigonal post iatrogenic post hysterectomy fistula where we are expecting a type 1 or a supratrigonal fistula in those cases is it really not relevant if you apply those uh, classification system in them you might not be able to predict the anatomical success rate the closure success rate but then in terms of the continence post repair these classification systems might be helpful so that's the only advantage of using these classification systems because you see the amount of emphasis this classification has paid on the continence or the closure systemic involvement that is why if you use these classification systems even in the supratrigonal it's mainly for the value of your continence outcomes after the repair okay so just to quickly summarize, the two classification system you should be aware of is the GOES and the Waldeck. Okay, and you know that while GOES is superior to Waldeck, the reason why there are multiples, it is a more detailed description of the closure system. Number two, you get a more detailed idea about the level of fibrosis, amount of fibrosis, the vaginal length, the bladder capacity, the any previous surgery, any other risk factors which might predict the failure of the repair. And the third thing that you should know is these are mainly for the ostrative fistula. And if you are still using it for a non-ostrative fistula, the main advantage of it is in predicting the continence outcomes because they are mainly emphasizing on the closer system involvement. Okay. There have been questions on this, so I needed to emphasize these points. You don't have to memorize in details, but then you should be knowing the components. It's important. And uh, so we'll be coming up with more such topics. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching this.